I was born August the 24th, 1949, in a small country town in the Mallee of South Australia called Lamaru. And uh, my parents, Les and Betty Lush, um, I was the second child. I have a brother, Steve, who's six years older. And uh, a farming, long-standing farming history. Um, uh, uncles and aunties, grandfathers, grandmothers, all from the land. Sheep and wheat, and it goes back a very long way. The best childhood, I would say, ever, particularly as it's turned out to offset what I chose to do for a profession, or it chose me, really. And I think the area that I grew up in, the Mallee, the remoteness of it, uh, small. We lived in Lamaroof until I was nine. And that was what was known as the good belt of the Mallee. It was good wheat and good sheep, and it was quite a wealthy area. And my dad share farmed his brother's, one of his brother's farms, and decided that he would buy his own property. So we moved a hundred miles away to a little town called Galga. It was Dad's chance to you know, step out on, into his own and, and be his own boss, so to speak. Um, so it was quite different. Lamaru Primary School had, there was 40 children in my class. It was a really um, vibrant area. There was lots of young families, um, lots of things going on. And when we moved to Galga, I went to a school that was in a little church hall. There was five in my class and to my dismay, the other four were boys. <laughs> And um, I was Miss Rural Youth in the Rural Youth for my area, which is based on knowledge, not on it's not a beauty quest. It's um, crop rota rotation and uh, <laughs> tractor and harrow manoeuvrability and sheep fleece density. So that was who I was at that time. And I always loved the music side of it through mum and dad. We got the power poles came marching across our paddocks in about 1964 and we all got television. So television introduced this whole world and possibility to me and I would, there was shows came on called Commotion and Go and they had uh, sometimes one of them, I forget which one now, I think it was purely nice looking young boys and girls miming the hits and they do dance routines so I'd always watch this at about half past five in the afternoon. And here he is, Johnny Young! They were right, when the time is right it will happen because my father went to a town, our local town was Wakery and dad would go there for the annual sheep sales and then go to the barber and have his hair cut you talked football and all other things, except that the band leader was in there this day and he was in a dreadful state. He said, we've, we've got the high school ball, which was a big deal, in the town hall tonight. And we had a girl who was our singer and she's disappeared. She's, she's left town, she's gone back to Adelaide. And what to do, what to do, he was in such a state. And dad being dad, <laughs> said, oh, look, my daughter's always singing. Um, Maybe, you know, if you need someone to help out, I could probably run her up, which is 70 miles, the old 70 miles. And Dad had just gone up there in the morning and he was quite prepared to go back home and then come back in the evening for me to fill in for this band. And the band member was so grateful. He just, yes, please. It was a perfect combination. I could be on the farm during the week and sing at the weekend. I would have done that forever had that band not entered me in the first ever television talent quest in 1969 on Adelaide Television. They sent in the form because they knew I wouldn't and went into my little Galga shop one day to get the mail and there was this letter saying, come to Channel 7 for your audition and I thought, what audition? Don't let that door now hit you Julie Lush, well, 
So Ernie Sigley was probably the catalyst. Ernie had a show in Adelaide called Ernie Sigley's Adelaide Tonight. It ran three nights a week in little old Adelaide. And Ernie said, look, I saw you on Channel 7 because this is Channel 9. I watched you on Channel 7. And if you want to come on this show any time, he said, I would say we'd love to have you every second week. And then what they did, Ernie was terrific. He put a tape together after I'd done enough shows. He picked out what he thought was the best of what I'd done and sent it to Graham Kennedy. That was the beginning of the slow growth of um, Don Lane's show in Sydney. They saw those shows and they said, come on our show. Bob Rogers' show in Sydney. Musical director Wally Lund in Adelaide said, there's only one agent who I know is a really good, honest, will look after a kid like you. And his name is Tony Brady. When I auditioned her that very day, mm -hmm. you sang a very difficult song, One Note Samba, yes. remember? One note. One, One note. note. That's about <laughs> and, <laughs> I tell you, it's not an easy song for any singer to sing, but I discovered immediately this was not just any singer. This was something special. And uh, the voice, the musicality, the, the look, was just magnificent. He said, what about Anthony? Because he's Anthony Brady. And he said, another good thing, it's an A. So when it comes to bi billing, he said, you're an A. It's better than being a Z. So that's how she was born. I'd been working around for probably two or three months and Tony Brady said, oh, look, there's a, an agent from New Zealand in and he's auditioning for a venue over there. So go down and do the audition and you might get to go over to New Zealand and do the to the Logan Park Motor Inn and it was a three week job and he said you better get to see a bit of New Zealand while you're there might be good. So I actually did get picked as one of the acts and uh, Ed was the assistant manager of the venue and that's how we met. I went to the front desk, front desk and said have you got any good books <laughs> and he rustled up a book for me and there that was the beginning. So we've been together ever since. This was when I first got Irene. This is back in 74. Yeah. And Irene was just the new show in town when one of the, well, two of the St George bosses, the CEO and his two IC, came to see Irene just as a night out with their wives. And the boss said, you know those ads we were thinking of doing, the all singing, all dancing ads? She's the one. I'd been on a founding governor of the foundation, which is helping uh, children's charities. And that was terrific. I loved that. It was such a lovely thing to give heaps of money to, you know, uh, charities who didn't have government funding or an infrastructure. We picked the ones who were struggling and who did wonderful things. And I met all these wonderful charity workers who do it for nothing because they're angels. So it was after the sound of music. Oh, daughter, eldest daughter Tally was born in eighty four, and Tamara six years later. After that, I'd clicked in with the Seekers. That was really terrific. They were asked to do the closing ceremony of Expo in Brisbane, and by that time they weren't uh, Seekers as we know them with Judith because they'd long broken up, and Judith was in fact doing her own thing with jazz had been for years. They rang up the expo people and said, our little guy said that if you would join he and the boys in the carnival is over for the closing of expo and if you will do it, that'll be just perfect. And at the end of it, Bruce said, you wouldn't sing this, would you? If we put a little tour together. I said, guys, I have to leave now. And, and they said, why? And I said, because I'm going to have a baby. And they went, down. It was a series of concerts they did. Channel 10 did them, Australia Day Live. When the new anthem came in, um, Tommy Tico was doing the music. So bless his heart, he created this wonderful arrangement that is the heart and soul. I, I was the lucky one who got to sing it. Ed uh, was the push behind it. He said, when we went to the baseball in America, it's that moment when somebody sings the anthem and they all put their hand on the heart. 
and sing their anthem and Ed said if only we had something like that he said we sort of do but how do we get it out there so he went to St George and said would you bankroll a recording of this would you pay for the symphony and Tommy and we want to put it down and take it to the government and make schools package so they whipped up a million flags and a pack and put the, uh, the cassette pack in with the flags and the pack send it out to all the schools I do love it, I never lost that. And the fact that I think I've always done uh, the best on any given show that I can. I've never gone out there and, and thought, oh, I don't want to be here. Even, you know, I've always, every night's opening night, which is even if I'm not feeling great, someone will say, oh, well, you can just sort of cruise through. I don't know how to cruise. It's, it's all guns or, or none at all. <laughs> 